In today's video, we are fixing the front end of the G80 M3 to take it from this to this. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a carbon fiber CSL inspired grill on a G80 M3. And don't worry, you M4 guys, because this fits the G82 as well. And the process is exactly the same because it's the same bumper. Now, with that being said, we do need to remove the bumper, but don't worry because we're going to show you every nut, bolt, fastener, and we're not going to skip any of the hard stuff. But the good thing is it's actually not that hard of a process. So even if you're lightly mechanically inclined, this is going to be a great project for you to tackle on your driveway and no, you don't need a lift. And then over here on the table, we have our favorite weir kit that we like to use for these kinds of projects and also a little trim popper. I don't know the model number offhand, but we have links to all of this for you down below in the description. Once we're done with the DIY, we're gonna show you some really detailed shots of how cool this looks on a G80 M3. So without further ado, let's get started. Now for this process, we are going to be filming on a lift. We're only using the lift for video purposes so that we get really good angles so you guys know exactly what is going on. Typically, if I was to do this at home without the camera, what we would do is just do it on the ground, maybe use a jack and jack stand. All right, first part of the process is we need to release some of the fender liner. So if you take a look in here, there's a 10 mil and there's a 10 mil. Now, when I was working on Mike from Slow Speed's G82 M4, his were eight mils. So something to be aware of, there's actually one up here as well. So there's three of these. They're either gonna be a 10 or an eight. And then up here, there are two bolts, and I believe these ones are eights as well, but we'll verify once we get there. So let's start by removing these. So now what you're gonna do, watch your eyes, is carefully pull out your fender liner, like so. And then once we get here, you're going to see a bolt by my thumb and then a bolt by my index finger. So that's what we're going to remove next. So for these, I, I like to use extensions. So you can see I have my ratchet nice and low because it makes it a lot easier to twist the ratchet. Almost like that. So once you've done that, what I like to do is put a piece of painter's tape on here so that we don't scratch anything. And I'm just gonna pull it out and then just rest it on there. Now after you have it all taped up and pulled out, there are three sensors that need to get disconnected. This one here, this is your ambient temperature sensor. Over here, pull out this little gray piece, press on it, and then that'll pop out. And this is for your PDC, your parking sensor. And there's one more that has this little white retaining clip. So you take your tool, you pop it like that, and then you press on it and pull it out. So it locks in place like that. And then you get a flathead or something, you do that. And then once you press down, it releases this little tab and pulls that out. Now let's go release the other side. And then pull this out, just like the other side. We have our PDC right there. And there's another connection up here. So this one, there's a clip on the top and also the bottom. You just press it in and press it in and pull it off. So then once you've done that, everything electrically is disconnected and we're ready to move on to the bottom of the bumper. Now what we're going to do is remove these series of 10 millimeters, uh, basically along like where your the front of your bumper or your lip is. You don't have to remove these, that's too far back. Just these front ones. And then what you can do it's just slowly start to loosen out the front bumper. Okay, we'll do that side. On this side. Okay. Now, I have a three-piece lip, and as you can see, this has actually been track tested at um, way north of 100 miles an hour. Um, and everything is great and it doesn't require a tape, it just bolts right up to the factory location. So if you have one of our lips, make sure to take it off at this point. Okay, so then I'm just gonna loosen up the bottom. 
Make sure that everything is good. Make sure we didn't miss any bolts. Okay. So now we can move along to the top. We need to remove this part right here so that we can get to the actual fasteners. So just take a little trim tool, pop up the middle of this like that, and then you'll be able to get the rest. So just like F-Series and they use them on E-Series too. Looks just like that. So then once you push this down, it spreads it and locks it in place. So just remove all of these. Then once you've done that, you just lift this piece up and just move it out of the way. You can see the different Torx bolts. All right, for this next part, you are going to need a T30. Let's have this little attachment on my weir. Um, when you go to remove these bolts here, the two on the ends are a little bit different. You'll notice that the washer is a little bit smaller. Another thing to note is that when BMW tightens these down, naturally it puts a little indentation in the plastic. When you go to put the bumper back on, you wanna make sure that you line it up with that groove. I'll just take this one out just so you can see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, there's a little indentation from where this was. So if, if you go to install your bumper and it's way off, it's not, your, your hood line is gonna be funky like a Tesla. You don't want that. So that's why you bought a Beamer, right? So when you go to reinstall it, make sure that you line that groove up and then everything's gonna look spot on. So with that, let's remove them all. You'll notice that the bumper slides into these little metal brackets. So what you do is you literally just slide it out like so. And make sure you're holding the bumper. They do require a little force. Okay. And we take it off like so. And then if you have a bumper stand, it's gonna come in very handy right now. So when I said it requires a little force, it's because there's these little clips down here. There's one over here and there's one over here. So sometimes it'll feel like something isn't fully undone. Just gotta give it a little tug. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is take our little trim tool and release that little fastener right there. Then we can move over to the camera. So what you do is just kind of spread these out. There's three of them. They're like, how can we make this like super awkward? So they did it like that. We're gonna set this over here like so. Now, just for the time being, I'm just gonna put a little piece of painter's tape over here because I don't wanna look at scratches for the rest of my life. Next, we have a little PDC sensor over here. Um, I'm gonna leave it connected for now but you are gonna have to spread um, this piece and then the other piece here out, and then that'll pop up like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this over here. There's a clip right here. These are a pain in the butt. Right, Zach? Oh yeah. They suck. These are like, like grab my thing. <laughs> Stop it. Pull up on them. Like it's got like a death grip. Like, what are you doing with that? You don't need spikes, BMW. Okay. And then this one over here. So I'm gonna... If you push up from behind, it makes it a little bit easier. All right, now it is time to take out the grill. So if you look over here, they're all kind of hard to see, but basically this little tab right there is the bumper and it has a little hook. So what you want to do is pry that this way towards me a little bit and then start to pop it up. And then you can start to work your way around. This might be a little bit easier for you to see. Honestly, they're all kind of hard to see. So. Okay, so that one looks good. That one looks good. That one looks good. Oh, here you go. Here's the easy one. Just a little upward pressure. Come on, buddy. Some of them are just gonna pop on you.
Oh no, this guy put back in. <laughs> yes. Just leave them out. <laughs> Two giant gaping holes. Airflow, bro. Listen, bro. You got the airflow? All right, so now, see, look at the weight savings alone. Put this in. Okay. Start to line it up. I like to make sure it's lined up before I start pushing them all in. The thing about dry carbon, it just fits so good. So dry carbon, people think, a lot of people actually, think that dry carbon is matte carbon. It's not correct. It's actually a manufacturing technique where it has the resin in it. So it, you can make it super thin and it's super strong, but you can also have it glossy. And that's what this is. So very strong, very thin. It has no plastic backing, right? No plastic backing. Fits really good. It's gonna go straight back down. Like so. And then that is gonna go there. Um, these we are going to just put some 3M tape just so it doesn't bump around. these wiggle them into place like so okay pop that in those are good just making sure everything's clipped in that one wasn't <laughs> see and that's why you tested before so everything else looked good except for that one all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a couple pieces of this gorilla tape on here so nothing's bouncing around. And we're ready to reinstall. All right, if you have a friend, uh, might be helpful if they help you put this thing on. If you don't have a friend, I'll be your friend. All right, so what you're gonna do is you want to line, this part is gonna line up over this. All right, so uh, what you're gonna do, line everything up and then slide it into place. Again, pay attention to the grooves because that is very important. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two end ones. Those are the ones with the smaller washers and I'm just gonna lightly thread them in just so the bumper doesn't fall off the car. Okay, so this is just gonna be our, our holding point. I like to do it last when I'm removing and I like to do it first when I'm reinstalling just because it acts as a holder. Um, now, what you're gonna wanna do, is just start to navigate this in line, start to do it on the other side. And then if you remember, we have those clips. So we need to make sure that everything is at the correct level and that the clip is going to slide on. So that clip looks good. This one was a little bit high. Where's it at? There's it at. Okay. So then give a little chiropractic adjustment. Get that in place. Do the same on the other side. And then everything is secured in place at the moment. So if I pull on it, it's not going anywhere. That being said, make sure that you have everything here that you're navigating this around here like so and then everything is under the light. Again, I wouldn't really stress about the top because you can pull that in after the fact. Um, so let's start with the more difficult, which is going to be these, and start to twist that in. Um, if you have to pull up very hard, something is not aligned, so it should go pretty easy. So as you can see with minimal effort, that goes up. Once you get one in, make sure everything is straight. Um, there are 
little alignment pins, you wanna make sure that they are going into place. Again, it's a lot of it is gonna be if it's going in easy, if you can hand twist it in, whatever, to a point. Um, everything should be fine. Okay, do another test, we're good there. Then plug the connections back in, then reinstall the 10 mils. Do the exact same thing on this side. So then once you're here, reinstall all the 10 mils. All right, so now we're gonna push the bumper on. Then we're going to line up the previous indentations and then tighten them all down. Then what you can do is line all this back up and reinstall all your fasteners. Once you've done that, you're done. Can't reach it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that everything is installed, let's check it out. So as you can see, this carbon fiber CSL inspired grill completely changes the front end of my car and it goes so well with these other carbon bits I have on the side, the air ducts and the front lip. And it really completes the whole look that I was going for with this car. And the install isn't that bad. As you saw, yes, you have to remove the bumper, but it's really not that bad and you only need like three or four tools. So it's super easy to do. Now, if you guys are interested in one for your car, we're gonna have links to the products and also the tools we use in today's video down in the description below. So once again, my name is Brian, that's Zach Behind the Camera. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.